Well, here inside Allegiant Stadium, they have crowned a champion. Andy Bocciolo, Christian Jack with you. There have been two finals in CONCACAF Nations League, and both of them have now been won by the United States. We just saw that, KJ, 2-0. They defeat the Canadians, both those goals coming in the first half. What did you make of the overall game? Uh, I thought it was a comprehensive victory for the best team by a mile. I think ultimately they were terrific. You know, ultimately they, they had a game plan. They stuck to it. They came out the blocks well, as, as often happens in finals. Set pieces pr proved crucial. And, uh, yeah, by far and away the better team. It could have been more, to be fair. And Canada only started to play when they were down by two. And that's when it's the easiest to play. Did sense a bit of nerves coming from the Canadians, and I know we talk a lot because it's the absolute truth. It's facts. These are Canadians who are now playing with bigger clubs. They're winning trophies. Uh, but you could tell there was a sense of occasion here today for the first time in 23 years playing for a trophy. Did it look like they took some time getting into this game? Not for me, no. I don't think they, I don't think they lost this game because of the occasion. Uh, I, I, I think this, they lost this game just because ultimately they were not prepared to play a team at this magnitude at this time. And there's a lot of question marks that need to be answered here. Uh, a lot of questions. You know, we're here live, it's right after the game. Uh, it's raw, do you know what I mean? But if we want to be a real football country, you need to dissect this very closely. And um, I thought they were awful for most of the game, I have to say. Uh, and, and I think they were nowhere near the best version of themselves, not, a, not even close. Uh, and, and this is not a night for me to hear about lack of preparation time, lack of budgets, more players playing in tier one leagues. I don't want to hear any of that. You know, this was a game where you've got outstanding players playing for Canada tonight. And for whatever reason, they weren't able to show up. Uh, playing in different positions, changing shape, changing formations. Um, for a large part of the game, there were shambles. And it's not good enough. And nowhere near good enough. And that's a good thing. We can't be here, sitting here, accepting defeat, laying down and saying, oh, well, you know, USA, more players playing in tier one countries, better team, they deserve to win. No, we need to be angry. We need to be mad, because if you're like that, then you're going to make sure that things sting and stay with you and make sure that fundamental changes happen. Because this was an opportunity tonight, and they let it slip. The bar has been raised. The expectations are definitely higher. Let's talk about perhaps some of the performances here because we know that up front you have players who can score and Jonathan David and Kyle Aaron. Alfonso Davies came alive, I feel, more in that second half. Why do you think they couldn't find the back of the net? Well, it, this is not a problem in Las Vegas. This is a Canada soccer problem for a while now where they cannot great grab games and control possession in games. They can't keep the ball. And we could sit here and say Jonathan David and Kyle Lahren were disappointing. It's not a game to blame those strikers. It's a game to figure out why they can't keep the ball. And is that a tactical problem? Is that a personnel problem? Is that a coaching problem? It might well be a part of all of it. But for whatever reason, Canada are a team that have had success built in transition, a, a team of moments, not teams that can control games and dominate games. Um, you know, like today was a little bit like Morocco. You know, the game's over, and then suddenly you play and it's comfortable in the second half and the other team's deep. You can't break teams down when they say, we're going to play deep. So maybe that's the answer to your question. I think the Alfonso Davies one is a bigger question. There's a lot of concerns. He's played three different positions again. That's not the first time. It won't be the last. He's... We were told before we went to the World Cup that Alfonso Davies, Andy, was a striker. He was a forward player for Canada. We were told that when he came back from the World Cup, that's not happening anymore. He's a wing back, he's a full back. He played wing back here and he got torched. He got torched. The United States dominated this right side for 25 minutes and they moved the best player on the team and one of the best players in the world in that position to the opposite side to protect him. That's a fact. Now, that's, there's something wrong there. There's something badly wrong. Alfonso Davis is a far better player than that. And they moved him out of the way and then they played 4-4-2 and they played him in the left wing. It's not good for this team that he keeps moving positions. You need to find a way to get the best out of him. And right now, both sides are to blame, player and club, a team, but they're not getting the best out of that player. Nowhere near. Yeah, in that first half, he and Richie Larea ended up switching sides, trying to get Alfonso Davies some freedom because it wasn't really happening on the left for him. 
Do you look at injuries at all as well with this Canadian team? Alistair Johnston, uh, you know, we know a lot of players coming in with Knox. Alfonso Davies being one who hasn't played since the end of April. I can go down the list here. Do you look at any of that and think what could have been? Of course, but that's international football, right? Like, that's just the way that international football is, is that you have to deal with those challenges. You know, for me, that's what you have to look at, you know. Are there reasons for failure or are there excuses for failure? Can they have been overcome? Yes. Do the United States have injuries? Yes, they just lost two plays to suspension. McKenney and Dest are playing in that team. Pulisic barely played for Chelsea. You know, they lost the starting centre-back and Zimmerman came in and was excellent. So yes, of course, Alistair Johnston nowhere near the level that he's at. He's played a ton of minutes, he's been marvellous for this country and he was not himself. You can see that there's a lack of rhythm there. But that's also international football. And that's why you have these tournaments. They played three days ago. So yes, of course, there's something to that. But that's not the reason why they lost. Let's talk about the champions a little bit here. And that, of course, is the Americans. And as I mentioned, both of their, their goals coming in that uh, first half. What did you just make of how they were able to overcome the suspensions to key players in McKenney and Des, right? Not bench players. We're talking about key players here. How do you think they were able to overcome that and have the game they did? Well, they're a very athletic team. Uh, they've got a lot. They've got they've got more technicians in Canada. They're very comfortable in the ball. They can ease away. You could see that they targeted that right hand side very early. You know, Azorio was grabbing onto Wei's shirt. It led to obviously a free kick, and then led to a corner. Um, the, the first goal should be saved, by the way. That's a problem for Canada as well. But the way that the United States went into the game, I thought they were very direct. Very. I thought they were. They wanted it. They seemingly wanted it more. You know, yes, you could say that they're better players. But they won second balls. They were first to the key headers. They were second, as I said, they were there. They wanted it more. They had, I think they had a lot more tempo to the game. Um, they're playing at home. I know that that's an advantage, but I thought they were excellent. You know, and again, it wasn't six night. It was somebody else. Balogun got his goal, and he's going to be the star for this team now. You know, they've been wanting that striker, and, you know, he takes them up to another level. And when they get the best players back, they're, they're a force. And, um, but, you know, Berhalter and Co. will be, I think, very good going towards 2026. Obviously, John Herdman will be very disappointed with this one, KJ. This is something he has said to his players even yesterday, match day minus one. We've played them before. We know what to expect. We've also beaten them before. How do you think he's feeling right now? I think he's got a lot of a lot of things to think about. You know, I think he'd be very disappointed. Uh, and I'll be interested to hear some of his comments post game. As I said, I am. Um, the team underperformed, absolutely underperformed, and I just hope it's not a night for excuses. You know, I hope, hope for reasons behind that. As you said, Andy, there's been evidence in the past of, of defeating this team. Arguably, this team that you defeated today may have been under undermanned compared to some of the better United States teams that they've won against over the past as well. So, you know, ultimately, I think he's got a lot of things he needs to think about, uh, and it probably starts with number 19. Well, we actually have John Herdman now, so let's hear from head coach of Canada. Coach, what do you think went wrong tonight? Well, I think we left it all out there. I thought Canada gave a great uh, account of themselves in a final set pieces. We got done on the first one. They were very dominant in that space. But that's what 10 extra days of preparation gets you. You know, this team were ready to play a final. I thought our lads give it everything. They left it all out. They can be proud. We had a lot of chances. Just didn't take them. I thought there were some moments there where if we took our chance, it's a different game. But US, they took care of business. They were very resolute tonight and defensively sound. And now a quick opportunity to be back on the field and Gold Cup now. Yeah, you lose, you learn. And we've got to learn quickly going into the Gold Cup be a different squad, different feel to our performances there. But I think, again, you know, the lads, the lads can be proud of that tonight. And those that carry over, they'll be even more hungry.